Growing in our prayer life is one of our highest callings as believers, but so often there are these hindrances and these obstacles uh, that keep us from really praying the way that we should. And so in this video, I'm going to tackle the top three hindrances and some practical ways that you can overcome them. Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Cook. I have directed the Illinois Valley House of Prayer for the past three years now, which has given me a ton of experience about how to grow in prayer and overcome uh, these hindrances and obstacles that we face. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, make sure to do so. Uh, click that notification bell so that you can stay up to date anytime we produce new content. There's many practical hindrances uh, that I think uh, relate to why we're unable to really go deep in prayer. Today we're going to talk about probably the top three of them. Uh, the first one would be having a wrong view of God. So I want you to think back to when you were a child. Uh, let's say that you just did something wrong and you know your parents have just found out. Um, one of the things that you're probably going to do is avoid them because you're afraid of them being angry and upset with you and, and, and you don't want to face that. Well, a lot of us view, view God the same way as we do uh, with our parents in that situation. Uh, we think that he's angry with us. We think that he's always looking down on us, that he's always wishing that we could do better. And that's just simply not the case. God loves you. He loves me uh, in the deepest way possible. The same way that he loved Jesus, that's how Jesus loves us. Uh, once we begin to understand that, that's going to encourage us to spend time with him in prayer because we're no longer coming to the angry parent. We're now coming to the loving father who just adores us and wants to spend time with us. To go along with the wrong view of God, many of us have a wrong view of prayer. Um, I know that I used to feel this way, and, and there's probably many people, Christians and non-Christians alike, who still feel this way. Uh, they, they see prayer as a boring ritual. Um, it's devoid of power. It's something that we're just supposed to do for some odd reason, because doesn't God know everything anyways? So why are we just sitting here telling him what he tells us to tell him? Um, it just doesn't seem to make very much sense. But as we've talked about in previous uh, sessions, Prayer is about that connection. That's why he's bringing this about. That's why he wants us to talk to him, because he wants that connection. And uh, once we begin to develop that view of prayer as a time of connecting with God, it will really help us to deepen our prayer life. And so through that connection, we now are able to uh, experience great power from God. We're able to have expectation. Uh, Mark 11, 23 through 24 says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go! Throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. We must come to prayer with an expectations that if we're praying according to God's will, that those prayers will be answered. Uh, when we view prayer as just a meaningless uh, time spent asking God for things that we really don't think he's going to do for us, there's going to be a lack of power. There's going to be a lack of answers to those prayers. We must change our view of prayer uh, to expect that what we're praying for will be achieved in God's time. So the final piece that we're going to discuss on why it's hard to pray is that many of us come to our prayer times with a lack of preparation. Now this may not seem very spiritual, but I'm telling you that there's a great uh, leaps and bounds that can be made in prayer just by doing a few practical things. The first practical thing that I want to bring up is developing a prayer list. Having this prayer list will be a, a, a significant benefit for when you hit that time which uh, inevitably comes in every prayer time where you start thinking, okay, what do I pray about next? All you have to do, look down at the prayer list and there is a myriad of topics that you can continue to discuss with Jesus. I also think it's really important to cultivate uh, an environment for prayer. Um, now what I mean by that is you don't have to have this, this perfect little bubble that, that you have to go to to pray. Like I said, you can pray anywhere, anytime, and, and I encourage you to do that. But those times that you designate as, as your prayer times, like Jesus when he, when he uh, got away from the crowds and went away in the wilderness to be with God, for those times with you, having a place to go uh, that is quiet, that, that brings about peace, that encourages prayer, is going to be extremely beneficial. Well, the final piece of advice I have when it comes to preparing for your prayer time is actually scheduling it into your day. 
Uh, prayer, I believe, should be a part of everybody's uh, daily routine. And it's one of those things that often gets neglected because we put in other things in front of it, viewing them maybe that they're more important or that they need to happen while I can always just continue to put prayer off later on in the day. But if you schedule prayer the way that you would schedule a meeting for work or, or some doctor appointment, if you have it in your schedule and you commit before God to, to making that time be a time where you talk to Him and, and spend time listening to Him, I believe it's going to greatly help you to actually accomplish that daily time with, with Jesus.